<sighs> okay, hello everybody. Hello everyone, my apologies. Um, I'm going to uh, bring Sarah back on Skype in just a moment. Yeah, there's apparently now a severe weather warning in New York City, so I'll try to stick with you guys as long as I can. I am really sorry if I had control over the weather, I would do something with it. Um, but I apologize. Um, there's, I, I, there's just not much I can do about it, I'm afraid. Um, so anyway, why is this doing this? It's not window capture. I want webcam. Thank you. What's up, gentlemen? Good to see you. And again, my apologies um, for the issues. Again, and I don't. My battery backup has failed, so I don't know what's going on. It should not have. It should not have buzzed out at all. Um, but uh, it did. So anyway, read a long, angry letter to the weather. Listen, man. <laughs> that's that's. Uh, you you know not uh, how how tempted I would be to do such a thing. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, all right, so let me just uh, give you a moment here, and I will bring Sarah back on board. And hopefully we will not have that problem again. I don't think so. Yeah, Thor must be unhappy with me. Evidently, because he decided that he would make it incredibly hot all day, and then just now when I need it, he'll be like, now I will make sure the power is a problem. Like, that's tremendous. Okay, let me, uh, let me bring Sarah back in on Skype. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, hello, Sarah. I'm very sorry about that. Um, Hi, it's cool. Yeah, you may have heard my, uh, my objections to weather and things like that. I like the the uh, idea of the long angry letter, though. I think weather would really take that seriously. So. <laughs> I, I know it's true. It's true. They would they would shudder at the minute that it happened. So, um, <laughs> all right, give me a second. Okay. All right, let me get this recaptured. Okay. Yeah, Lego. I don't believe there's anything uh, forecast for tomorrow. Um, I have not had any brownout problems uh, here for I don't know the better part of a year, and I don't know why my battery backup failed now, but. I don't have time to go worrying about it at the moment, so I will, I will deal with it after cast, and I will hope that this continues. Um, all right, sorry everyone. Thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see what have we got here. All right, good, excellent. All right, so let's get back into it. Um, all right, so um, you folks can go back to the questions, um, and let's see. Question: How long was development on Divinity: Original Sin? There we go. Um, do you happen to know the the answer to that? Uh, yeah, I think it was in between two and three years. There okay. was a long time getting the engine going and the art and everything, and then um, uh, the design went rather quickly at the end. But yeah, two, three years altogether. Okay, okay. Um, and then you, and you're part of it. You were brought in after the Kickstarter. So how long did you have working on the game yourself? Um, let's see. Yeah, about exactly a year, I guess, is exactly as long as I've been in Belgium. So yeah, a year indeed. Okay. So a third of the time. It's crazy because I feel like I, I know the game so well and I feel like, um, I don't know, so much a part of it, but I forget that there were really like two long years that um, it's been in development before I set foot in there. And yeah, it's, they were really doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, so it's a bit, but it seems much longer <laughs> as, as <laughs> yeah. you were going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you have, by the way, plans for, uh, I don't know if they're going to have you, I guess it depends on the reaction to the game, working on stuff with the DLC or things like that? Have they have they chatted with you about what they have planned for you next? Uh, yeah, on, on comes, um, well, I, you know, actually I haven't heard something concrete. Uh, there's always talk about, um, yeah, kind of the next, the next thing to come and I, I, uh, I'll be here for that. Uh, last I heard from Sven is uh, yeah that I would be here working on those. So that's all I kind of know right now. We're trying to just get in this additional content uh, in the next few weeks, I believe, and then a little vacation, and then we'll all come back and kind of start on the next thing. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, let's see. You can control whether you choose not to. Well, thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Really, that that willing to sacrifice for the stream <laughs> is really is really much appreciated indeed. <laughs> uh. Um, okay, we're also loading this, and I have no idea how much of this this would have saved or not. I guess we're about to test how well the uh, autosave function works in here, because it's uh. not assumed to me. Um, let's see. Question. A few weeks ago, we discussed a hurry in voiceovers for a project. How much time did you have for your part of the writing? Was it too demanding? I think she answered the, how much she had for it. Did you know what you had to do from the beginning? And that is from Sir Tifi. Um, 
I think you mostly answered that. I mean, I think you had an idea coming in what they were going to be expecting from you. But maybe this is a way to phrase that question. Did they have a particular scope um, of question where they said, you know, we we have this idea that we want to? No, this is not right. Um, that that uh, this is what we expect that you'll be doing, um, and then that and it turned out that that was not you know, that was or was not what you actually ended up doing on the project in other words did what you actually did match the expectations that you had had going in maybe that's the way to ask that yeah um i think you know even when i went in for my interview even um having learned a lot about the company i was just amazed to find that the writing department what i thought was a department was just Jan, this very hard-working guy with a lot of talent uh, in a corner um batting away people from bothering him while he tried desperately to finish these these entire uh games by himself. So I think I was expecting to come and be part of a team. And when I um, found myself in the position of having a lot more um, trust put in me and responsibility than I imagined, um, it was amazing and terrifying, you know, a, a great privilege, but also, um, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. So yeah, I guess that was a surprise that they would trust an outsider so much. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I mean, then then thank you on behalf of those uh, outsiders who would be interested in doing it <laughs> that, that you didn't that you didn't drop the ball, um, obviously. Uh, let's see. Um, question: pl Are you planning on sticking around here in Belgium and with Larian, or are you more of a freelance kind of person going with whatever interesting project might take you? I suppose you should answer that question in a way that will not immediately get you in trouble with your bosses uh, down the line. Yeah. Well, uh, luckily in this case, the answer is. Um also complimentary to my boss because uh, Larian is a really great place to work and um, I've, I've read a bit about what it's like to work at other studios and I know that there's a lot more red tape and a lot more bureaucracy involved so being at a small studio like this where your voice is really heard is um, really special so I would like to um, stay as long as they'll have me pretty much. And kind of stick with it. Okay, good. That's yeah. good. That was actually the answer that we got from Yon last night um, talking about his job. So apparently all you folks are really happy working where you work, which is <laughs> which is great. We don't have any uh, we don't have any concerns about that then. Yeah. Um, let's see. A uh, question from Lakota Warrior. Do you think it's more challenging to write for a game based on historical or current events like Assassin's Creed or something fantasy based and based in its own universe? That is an interesting question, whether it's easier to work with what you have, but then you have to worry about historical accuracy or start more or less from whole cloth, although I understand you did have a, you know, a backdrop here to work with, but still more of a fantasy mm. world, you have more of your own choice here. So what's, what's harder for you, do you think? Yeah, um, sometimes I'm so grateful that we live in this fantasy, that we are working in this fantasy world where anything is possible because uh, you just have so many options for how you can resolve an issue in the game, a gameplay issue or a story issue. Uh, the world is your oyster, you can really let your imagination run free. Um, at the same time, a lot of times reality is stranger than fiction. So if you were going to do um, a game that was based on history, there's so much research and so much interesting stuff you could uncover, stories that haven't been told about that particular era that you could bring to light. So I think both would um, be amazing. Uh, for me, I love the fantasy setting. I love the divinity world that's so... Um, uh, going back to the first divinity game, Divine Divinity, is just so lighthearted and... Um, I don't know, just fun. There's just a lightness about it. It's a serious story that takes the player seriously in a lighthearted world, and I really like that. It fits with kind of my style also. So uh, I'm very happy kind of in the in this rivel on the Divinity universe. It's a really fun place to be. Yeah, and I've actually heard that quite a bit, that term lightness associated with this, as opposed to a game that takes itself very seriously, like, quite frankly, Dragon Age or games like that that are very, mm -hmm. you know, you get the impression there's not much of a sense of humor uh, involved um, with some of the writing there, whereas in this case there is much more of a kind of, uh, I don't know if European sensibility is the right word, but a, but a more of a, I don't know, that, that, that isn't quite as occupied with its own importance, if that makes any <laughs> sense. Um, yeah, so yeah. It does, it does seem like there's a lot of that that I've been able to notice as well. Um, let's see, Snipdog asks, would you like to work for a AAA game developers company which has a big budget but probably comes with more pressure? It's interesting. Ooh, I don't know. Um, I don't think you could, I, I wouldn't count any experience out. I think life is long and I would want to experience everything possible, I guess, within reason. Um, that said, as I said earlier, I'm really happy where I am because I know that uh, the big boss is just a couple desks away and if you have an idea you can go ask him if he says yes it's okay you go to the artist and you say here's what we're doing and it gets in the game and um, that's something really special so I, don't, I know you can't have that with the AAA titles um, but yeah I don't know it would it would still be something something special I guess to experience so yeah sure 
and I guess the flip side of that is that uh, because you have all your folks in house, you can you don't have to worry about well we'll talk to that department and get back to you when they you know get back to us. I mean you've got them the artists right there and you've got the sound people right there and so on for the most part. So I guess that's the other exactly. benefit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we'll talk to the art department. Tristan, do we have time to make this and this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, so <laughs> it's a, it's a bit fun like that. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, Let's see, Mindless Automata, I love that name, by the way. Um, and by the way, just to sort of reintroduce, um, my apologies again for the blip before. I Everybody, please pray that we don't get hit again. Um, but um, we have severe thunderstorms in New York City right now, so there may be some interruptions, and I'll do the best I can. I am interviewing Sarah Bayless, who is one of the writers for Divinity Original Sin, which is this game that you see. I will be starting to co-op play this tomorrow, and I'm, I'm really, really happy to get a chance to talk to Sarah tonight because it gives me sort of, a, I think, a deeper sense of what the world is like and the kind of tone expectation that I can have for the game, which is neat. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, you just do that by asking question in all caps, uh, and then you type your question in normal, and I will, uh, normal words, normal letters, and I will uh, pass those along to her. Um, and then as I say, um, probably Sarah will be with us for another 20, 25 minutes or so, and then I want to make sure she actually gets a chance to get to sleep, because it's very, uh, it's very late where she is. Um, and then uh, I will continue playing as power situation warrants. And also, if you are interested in um, following the stream, I always appreciate that. Um, if you hit the follow button down below, you will see more such content like this. I have interviews coming up with Tin Man Games uh, that do the uh, Fighting Fantasy game books for Android and iOS. Uh, obviously, just did the interview last night with the Valiant Hearts people at Ubisoft Montpellier. So there's other stuff like this that will be coming along as well. Uh, let's see. Question from Mindless Automata. Uh, how much significant rewriting of the plot was done through the whole process, due through the various process, due to various constraints or design decisions? Are there things that were cut that you want to come back to in future content? Yeah, that's an interesting question question is there stuff that you ended up on the cutting room floor that you wish hadn't that you'd like to see in a director's cut of the game or, or some such thing uh, yeah yeah of course uh, a, a lot of rewriting happens a lot of redoing of gameplay if you play it and it's not fun um, you just kind of have to scrap it and redo it and there's so many things uh, I think for all of the departments the art department writing uh, gameplay that you love them so much you know you crafted them by hand and you carved in their little features and their flaws and this and that and, and when it gets cut it's like oh it's really heartbreaking uh, but it's, it has to happen you know it's just like that so yeah there's a lot of rewriting I would love I, I'm, I'm always constantly thinking to myself like I'm gonna make my own mod I'm gonna mod this in myself yeah yeah it'll be great and <laughs> I'm sure it'll never happen because we'll be on to the next thing and all that but yeah there's just there's a lot of stuff floating around on the floor up there. You, you don't suppose you could have your own private team of modders that accidentally gets in some of the stuff that you happen to write? You're like, I don't know how that happened, but uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Yeah, just some guys. I don't know. No, that's crazy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, let's see. Question. Did the idea having two characters come from the writers or for someone else? Um, I guess the two writers in dialogue with each other. We asked. We talked a little bit about that before, but who came up with the idea, I guess, is the way to put that question. Oh yeah, that was before my time. Uh, I remember originally it was supposed to be, um, it was a set story. So you had your two heroes and they had um, a beginning and a middle and an end of a way that the relationship was going to be and, and their backstory and everything. So originally it was just Scarlet and Roderick and it was a story about them. And then um, kind of interacting with the community and see what they wanted. They wanted a real role playing game where they could craft their character, pick the looks, pick the everything. Uh, so yeah, it, it was changed at that point, but um, yeah, originally the two people was back in the day, before my days, sorry. Gotcha. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, there we go. Um, let's see, question, would you be comfortable working on a game of a different series or genre? I know you said you prefer the lighthearted fantasy, but I was wondering where your comfort zone ended. Yeah, is there a particular kind of game I mean, in my case, I don't write romance, so I would not be mm. writing a romance novel ever. Um, it's just not my thing. I, mm. Is there is there something like that for you that you would not be comfortable working on, you know, a fighting game, a, a, you know, a, I don't know, a zombie game? Is there a particular type of game that you wouldn't be interested in? Uh, no, I think all of, any kind of genre, I think, uh, would be a new and interesting challenge. I think it would be difficult for me to write a game like Grand Theft Auto, for instance, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just have trouble sinking my teeth into that kind of environment. Um, I have no problem with depictions of violence in video games. That's I don't think it's like an issue or anything, but just these kind of hyper-violent worlds are a bit hard for me. Um, there's some 
stuff in the in the game I remember writing, and it was uh, a scary story just that a guy was supposed to be telling about this like evil hag. You'll meet her in the Kula Forest if you guys want to find the storyteller. He'll tell you the story. But I was getting so into it that I scared I scared the crap out of myself. I was like alone in the office at night writing this scary story, and I was like, oh my god, I need to go home. I really really scared myself doing it. So I can feel like if I if I got too much in the environment of um, this like kind of hyper violence. I, I just can't imagine going a, a bit dark in my own mind, so I would try to avoid that sort of thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, my chat will tell you that I am exactly the same way. Uh, I have no interest in playing uh, any horror game. Uh, they, they do their job, they scare me. Not interested, no thank you. <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see, Simon asks, speaking of European, I've asked this before, but anyway, even not being that experienced in the game industry yet, do you feel there is a difference between the game industry in Europe and the United States? Is it more creative, perhaps? It's hard for me to say, because sometimes uh, I'll find out that a game is either American or European that I thought was the opposite, and so I can't really make any stereotypes, because I can't even tell the difference. Like, I was, I was sure that The Witcher was an, an American game, and I found out it was Polish, and I had no idea. So I feel like any um, stereotypes I could draw... Or, or yeah, I don't know. Uh, they keep crossing themselves, so I can't say one way or the, the uh, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah, The Witcher, which is a, a big, big thing on people are big fans of The Witcher on Twitch, um, and uh, par also partly because of the connection with good old games. CD Projekt runs both of those, so um, people are familiar with it. Hi, Anam. Good to see you, Anam Anonis. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm scrolling down to catch up with stuff. Um, let's see gentleman's doing that question if you ever get a chance to do voiceovers for example for a new hero of heroes of new earth would you accept it oh my god yes <laughs> <laughs> that's that not surprising awesome. to me and Neno and i'm sure is incredibly excited that you actually were talking about a moba other than league of legends um <laughs> because oh my goodness league of legends all for days everybody league of legends but yeah. um so yeah so that that's a definitive yes i guess and also thank you for the uh, follow by the way i didn't catch the name just there i'm sorry uh but thank you so much welcome to the Arbonauts. Um, okay, let's see. From Tessinthapa... Oh, my goodness. Let me see if I get this name right. Uh, Tayson... Topmas? Uh, let's see. Question. Would you want to work in a different genre besides RPGs? Do you think story dialogue writing would be as interesting in shooters, RTS, etc.? I asked a version of that before, and I think the answer basically was that I assume you would go where the, the game writing takes you or where the cool stories take you. Let, maybe it's a good way to put it this way. If you had everything else being equal, and of course it never is, but a choice between two similar projects. Uh, this game, for example, another RPG, or something that was perhaps an action adventure, um, but with an unusual protagonist. Would you find yourself leaning towards one subgenre or another if they were equal in that way? Yeah, um, I think, again, it's, it's hard for me to say, never having actually written a game like that, but um, I can imagine having a game with a set narrative would be uh, really interesting in its own ways and um, a bit less uh, mind. I don't know. Trying to trying to tell the same story in a thousand different ways, like you have to do with an RPG like this. So I think it would be a totally different challenge. But um, yeah, at this stage in in life in my career, I would welcome any challenge like that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a good answer. Um, let's see. I should write a horror thriller. Yeah, exe. Not, not likely. Burning passion <laughs> video games, a romance novel by Arvin. Yeah, yeah. I'll get right on that, gentlemen. It's, it's, it's a love story. Every, every story is a love story. That's what we're told. Um, let's see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Giltonum asks, hi, Gilt. Question, of all the characters of the Divinity world, which has been your favorite? And is there a specific character you would like to add into this world? Um, oh, gosh. I have a lot of favorites. Um, I think everybody loves Belagar, who's this rhyming wizard that's kind of just like chaotic and he shows up in all kinds of random places and he could give you a treasure chest or he could blow you up or summon some demons and he speaks in little poems. And I think those kind of characters are just like good solid fun and every time you get to write a Belagar, a Belagar encounter, it's like, yay, Belagar day! It's, it's very fun. And I heard someone so, talking about Belagar in chat and said congratulations to whoever did Belagar. So I guess everyone's popular, <laughs> everyone's happy with Belagar. Well, yeah, I don't even know who that is him. yet, so I, I, I'm about to find out, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, he's good fun. Uh, he's good fun, yeah. I, I really love, um, well, I don't want to give any, away any spoilers, but there's one main character in this game that I really love, uh, who you meet about halfway through, who's a big quest giver. I, I don't want to say the name because that might spoil it, but yeah, I really love that person. So. 
Excellent. Okay. Maybe maybe you'll recognize. That <laughs> so person. when we find someone that everyone really loves, we can be like, well, there we go. That's that, that must be it. That yes. must be what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Silverero, very nice. Uh, let's see. I should write a book about a professor who's a super soldier when he's on vacation. <laughs> yes, Snip. <laughs> that's that's my life. I don't know what you mean. Um, let's see. Exe. Uh, do you like writing fantasy or science fiction more? Well, that's actually, yeah, do you prefer, or maybe reading it might be uh, as just as good an option, do mm -hmm. you prefer fantasy or science fiction more in one direction? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I really do like science fiction. I took a couple classes on it at university, like college, university, um, and uh, I, I, I wouldn't say I prefer one exclusively over the other, but I do find myself kind of gravitating towards science fiction a bit more. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I can't say why, but uh, yeah. I okay. guess so. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, question. Have you written or wanted to write a character based on a real world culture or person and bring them into a game? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I know ages and ages ago, uh, Jan, um, the lead writer, was discussing some kind of game idea that they had floated a little bit that was going to be a bit like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with lots of uh, historical figures. And of course, like as soon as you hear that, your imagination starts firing about all the kinds of things you could do. Um, I, I, I guess I never had someone in mind specifically. Uh, I'm more interested, um, when you're talking about cultures, to bring into a game. I think there's a lot of really cool underrepresented cultures throughout history that have never really gotten a fair shake um, yes. at being represented, even though they were doing just as awesome things as ancient Greek, Greece and Rome or yes. um, Victorian England or whatever. So I think there's a lot of really cool history in the north of Africa that's very little represented or discussed. Um, also Middle Eastern civilization, which is extremely rich and cool, uh, that's not often discussed either. So um, I've always been interested in those and would love to see more about it. Yeah, and I, I entirely agree, and that's also the case with literature. Um, we've uh, I've had a chance to um, I know uh, Saladin Ahmed is a, a pretty well, who's a uh, writer of fantasy um, who wrote a world called uh, The Throne of the Crescent Moon um, that was published by Daw last year, and was talking about was one of the first. I, sh I can't say the first distinctive because there were other ones that were like this, but the one that sort of reached kind of a mass market um, appeal in terms of interest. Uh, and that was really interesting to see the reaction because I think a lot of times you get from publishers this thing of, oh, you know, but it's not going to sell. And, you know, if it's not available to them, it's not likely to sell, you know. Mm, so yeah. until the stuff yeah. gets out there, they're not going to know. Yeah, so. I was just arguing with my brother about this right before coming on the stream, actually, because he was saying, he drew some picture that um, I didn't like the way that he drew the woman. I thought it was too uh, sexualized or whatever, and mm -hmm. I was hollering at him about this. And he was saying, well, Sarah, what sells, if he, you, you got to follow the money. What sells, sells. And it's like, yeah, but you don't have an option of something else to buy. So you can't say people are only interested in one thing or they're only interested in Victorian England or ancient Greece and Rome because they don't have any other options. It's just what there's been. So I think you're exactly right in that. You've just got to present the option and then see, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to be able to give them, you really have to give the readers a chance before you can decide what they will and won't like. Um, as I think Bioware has demonstrated, you can you can create characters of, you know, sexual diversity and sexual diversity of sexual orientation and not somehow lose, in quotes, the mainstream audience. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, this is 2014, not 1914. I, I, I wish they would remember that. Um, yeah, I agree. A lot of times. Uh, for those of you who are asking if the stream is over, no, you may need to refresh um, because, again, we had a power outage in the middle and I hope that does not happen again, knock on wood. But in any case, um, that's... Uh, uh, that's what's going on. So uh, hang in there, um, please, and please refresh if you're not sure. <coughs> let's see. Uh, let's see. Sirius Simon asks, I'm not going to ask that question. How b Basically, are you feeling like you're getting tired? No doubt she is, and I won't keep her on much longer, Sirius. <laughs> I feel um, okay. This is actually great fun. Um, so, okay. yeah, I feel okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's, it's very fun. Okay, good. Good. So we haven't, we haven't lost her yet <laughs> to, the, no, to no. the world of sleep. <laughs> Um, okay, Nedwin wants to know, where can we read about you? News, updates, things of that kind. Do you have a professional site that you would turn people to? You specifically. Obviously, you know about Larian, but it, you, mm. you specifically. Oh, man, I, I registered this domain address like a year ago, and I have so many like plots like, ah, oh, yeah, and today's the day I'm going to activate my address and write all of my brilliant ideas for the world to see. And it never <laughs> happens, of course. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, I have a Twitter, but it's mostly just like toilet jokes. So... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't really. I don't have professional. Much I mean, are they myself. professional quality? You know, t toilet jokes or I mean. Yeah, yeah. You have to decide for yourself, my right. friend. Yeah. 
that's funny. No, so yeah, I, I have a Twitter. Maybe um, I'll revive that. I think that's like the most likely to be revived in a timely fashion, rather than the mystical, lofty idea of the blog that will one day come. So yes, uh, yeah, I'm at, I'm at S Bayless. You can follow me if you like and read some toilet jokes. So all right, well, yes. do you should definitely do that. Although, if I may, you know, add just a touch of advice, you should get that site going. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, I think I think people would be very interested to see it, and especially as someone who um, you know sort of progressing through this industry. Um, I think I know a number of people would be interested in reading um, your take on it. So just a, a slight bit of advice from me, having heard from many people, why don't you have more of a problem? Like I'm in like three mm. places. So mm. they're, al they're already hungry to hear more from writers all the time. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's good advice. <laughs> not, not whether you're in a position to take it, because I'm sure you're busy all the time, but just, just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, um, let's see. What uh, Glob asks, what game other than Divinity have you played and enjoyed? What games influenced you lately? I think we've asked and answered that previously, Glob, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass that one by. Uh, let us see. Scrolling down to get more. Uh, would you, as uh, asked the question, would you enjoy writing something like Heinlein, for example, which pushes social norms? That's an interesting question. I have a suspicion I know what your answer would be, but what, what would you say to that? Yes, yes, of course. I am a flaming liberal as ever, so uh, I always think that that sort of thing is interesting, and there's so much to be done with it, so yeah, of course. Excellent. There you go, Xanos. Um, and thanks, Jamin, for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome to the Arbonauts. Um, Wasp asks, question, if you stay in Belgium, is it possible you give a lecture about story writing at Howes, the digital arts and entertainment, where Sven did a presentation too? I would be very happy. That is a very Belgium-specific question. Um, <laughs> I, I have never heard of that, so do you yeah, know what yeah. he's talking about? Yeah, indeed. I'm familiar with the school. Uh, a lot of a, a lot of the people that work at Larian have graduated from there. Um, it's a cool program. If they wanted to have me, sure, I would probably be trembling like a chihuahua the whole time, but I, I would give it my best shot, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so that's that's an answer. So you need to make it happen. Make this happen. It's like the uh, things on band sites that say demand it. You guys need to demand it and make it happen so that she can she can tremble uh, in fear. Um, <laughs> tremble for an audience. <laughs> tremble yeah. for an audience. Uh, so TV asks, do you have ambition to progress in the gaming industry as a writer? Or do you want to do something else? Perhaps I think she mo mainly answered that she's happy where she is right now. Um, but I guess you're not limited to only doing this if something else presented itself. But at the moment, you're happy in the game industry writing side. Is that Basically, am I summarizing that that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, very happy. Um, okay, let's see. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Chances for games and all. In times where mainstream games are more and more casualized, trying to reach a wider audience, while independent games are getting crazy creative and have a solid platform now. Here is the leading question to end all leading questions. Do you think big producers will soon have to rethink their strategies to make their games sustainable for anyone? I sense a small directed <laughs> quality to that question, Simon. Um, and I probably agree with you. But I guess the question would be... Um, was it part of, as you were in the process of writing it, were you thinking about not dumbing it down? Were there moments where you thought, maybe I should be more explicit about saying something in a game that I wouldn't do in another context, but um, you did not do it because you said, no, I'm going to trust my audience to be able to get this without me holding them by the hand? Yes and no. I think actually our boss Sven um, wouldn't let us do that even if we wanted to. Okay. You know, like I, I think if, and this has happened several times that I approach a dialogue like, and at the end I tell them where to go next. And Sven would play the game and say, no, that's not how you finish a dialogue. You finish with a hint about where they should look to figure out where to go next. You know, it's not, you lead them through the hand and they're thinking to themselves, ah oh, yes, I have just received a quest. Excellent. You know, yep. it's more like uh, having a conversation and what do you take away that, from that conversation for where you should go. So in in their particular company for this game, it's not even possible. Um, so yeah, that could be good for some people or bad for some people. It depends on your preference, I guess. But your preference is clearly to, to have a situation where you are more uh, writing in a more mature way um, for people that you expect will be smart enough to understand what you're writing, <laughs> basically. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, seeing how people play the game it has really shown me that there's a market for that. There's people who want to play like that. I think I had kind of been under the impression that people don't want that. They want a quest. They want tasks. It's for relaxing at the end of the day. You want to accomplish something. But uh, I think my experience with this game has shown me that there's like really a big audience of people that want to be adults and, um, yeah, be creative with the game also and not just be led through it by the hand. So, I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah. That's also been my sense as well. I mean, I know there are people who just like to kick back and, 
play World of Warcraft and not think about it. But I think there are a number of people who have really grown tired of that, frankly, and, and who yeah. were looking for a game that took them seriously. The new independent game from Supergiant Games that did Bastion uh, called Transistor. Um, it's not a perfect game. It does have issues, but I, it literally doesn't even start you with a menu screen. You know, you just start and it immediately just says, and, and it starts right in with the story and the dialogue. And I'm impressed with that. And I think that is speaking to something larger that people have wanted, which is to be taken seriously. So, mm. yeah, I, I think it's, I, I agree on that score. Um, let's see. Uh, Lego asks, question for me. In college, did you work for a radio station since you seem born for interviewing people? Thank you, Lego. That's very, um, but uh, I've done some podcasting and so on. But thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment. Um, let's see. And also, yes, transcoder hype. Uh, what that means, in case you don't know, Sarah, is that the uh, transcoder means that we have enough people that they've now given us different quality options. So people who are on a slower stream can watch at low or medium or high quality. So that's oh, why cool. that slight dropout, which is good. And that even happened after the power outage. So that's light, that's delightful. Um, okay, Glob Monkey, question. What kind of graphic content do you believe is acceptable in video games? Is there a line not to cross or is everything fair game? That's interesting based on what you just told me about uh, Grand Theft Auto and your feeling about that. What, what's your take mm. there? Um, I don't think there's any line that can't be crossed by the right, with the right attitude and with the right considerations. So, um, yeah, I don't, I can't just... I can't imagine ever supporting some kind of like across the board government censor censorship. You're not allowed to show X, Y, Z in a video game or a movie or whatever. But I think it's incumbent uh, upon the person who's creating the story to consider what they're telling, how they're telling it, how the audience is going to receive it, and uh, who this affects and how. So I think really any any kind of topic can be approached as long as it's, pro it's approached from a conscientious place. The, the only stuff that bothers me is just stuff that feels um, gratuitous and kind of vile and kind of uh, exploitive and voyeuristic. I, I don't find that In other words, nice. all of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> no, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. I haven't played much myself, so I can't really speak one way or another about it. I just kind of have a sense about it, but I've never um, really sat down and played through them. So uh, I, I guess I'm speaking a little bit ignorantly about when I say uh, I couldn't write that game. I, I feel no, like I could No, I don't <laughs> entirely. I mean, you'll, you know, I, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but I, I don't think that <laughs> I don't think that's completely off, frankly. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. So it, it wouldn't, it would not surprise me. That's interesting, and I think, I think more or less most people would agree with you on that score as well. Yeah. Um, oh, fire or neat. Uh, let's see, let's uh, What is your opinion on the position of female gamers? That's interesting. If you look at Twitch, most of the females are looks oriented. Well, all right, I don't want to get into all the details about that. Let's. Some of that is inside baseball, but, um, but no competitive females. There are some, but let's sort of take the overall point of that. I think you answered this in respect to uh, females in the industry as writers. Is there so, any of that that you run into as someone who plays games as a female? Is that something you were you were aware of before you began writing for games as well? Um, I'm trying to avoid too many of these questions because I don't want it to be the focus of what we do. But sure. um, I don't want you to be have to <laughs> please speak for all female gamers. But <laughs> still, is about the tell, tell well, us no, about but I, I have so many opinions about these things. Okay. So you know, what can I do? No, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think. Being a chick when you're gaming is like being anything when you're gaming. It's like being a black gamer or a gamer with a disability or young or old or uh, having an effeminate voice or whatever it's going to be. No matter who you are, you're going to get dumped on. Um, of course, if I'm playing something like Heroes of New Earth and I make the mistake of using my voice chat and everybody jumps down my throat or is super nice all of a sudden, it makes you feel a little funny or mm -hmm. um, a little different, I guess. But um, yeah, actually. Regarding the streamers who seem to be more looks oriented, and we kind of glossed over that, but I do have opinions about that. Good opinions with capital O. <laughs> um, I think it's fine. I mean, if if somebody is streaming and they it's it's very profitable, and if you can get a profit in a certain way that's not hurting anybody, why not? Um, I don't. Uh, I think these these people get a lot of vitriol because it's seen as like exploiting exploiting other people or whatever. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's supply. Uh, I don't want to say supply and demand. I guess that's silly. But um, I don't know. I don't see any issue with it. I think sexuality is fine, and if people want to combine sexuality and gaming in a way that makes everybody happy, as long as everyone's happy, or most ah. people are happy anyway. So <laughs> Get, getting everybody happy, of course, together is is always a, a, a easy popular proposition on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. But for sure, thank you, uh, Von Hellman, uh, as well, for the follow. Um, let's see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Dragon Spirit asks, what's your favorite work of fiction? Favorite author, I think we've talked about. Well, maybe that's this may be different than your inspiration for this. John Milton in Paradise Lost was for this. What's your favorite work of fiction and favorite author? Aside from me, yes, thank you, Dragon. That's very kind of you. Um, but what's your favorite work of fiction and favorite author outside, I guess, of this field, maybe, or outside of this particular inspiration for this game? Oh, gosh, yeah. 
so many. Sophie's Choice, choosing favorite author, favorite book. Yes. Uh, lately, I've really been into the Czech authors. Uh, I mentioned before that I was in Prague before this, and I um, was trying to read up on their canonical work. And um, Hrabal, Bohemil Hrabal, who I, Hrabal, Hrabal, uh, who I had never heard of before going there, um, just writes these amazing masterpieces in, in, in relatively short form. So um, him and Kafka and... Um, uh, sorry, my mind is going blank. Incredible lightness of being author. I can't remember his name. Oh, um, yeah, no, I just slipped my mind too. Um, uh, starts with a K. I'm so sorry, I can't remember. But um, yeah, I don't know. I guess the Czech canonical authors right now, as a whole, are my favorite uh, okay. pieces of fiction. Thank you for the follow, Sheep Up. I'm expecting this huge run of uh, Czechoslovakians to uh, immediately favor the channel after hearing that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've satisfied the Belgians and the Czechs. Yes. Yeah, who's, who's next? You better get to, I was going to say, you better get to the Germans, the French, the Spanish are going to be upset <laughs> with you um, anymore. Yeah. Um, let's see. What uh, Polar asks, what type of character is easiest for you to write dialogue for? Is it the more lighthearted character then that, that you were talking about before? Or uh, not necessarily favorite, but easiest, I guess. The easiest for me, I think, is the character with no limits that um, is, is some kind of like bard that's really into telling the stories in a theatrical way and can talk about any, any kind of topic you can imagine or the character that's like a little bit unhinged and um, nothing, no non sequitur is too non sequitur for that character. Those are the easiest for me because um, they just put me in this kind of like manic excited zone that's very easy for me to write in. So those are the easiest, I guess, yeah. So has Favorite, anything that puts yeah. you in a manic zone is, is easiest for you to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hi, Cambridge. Good to see you, Cambridge. Yeah, I know. Big storms. No kidding, Cambridge. We already had a problem. Cambridge is the person who's responsible for the bot in my channel, and uh, Cambridge also is, lives in New York City, so he's running into the same thing I am. Yeah. Um, let's see. Who are we kidding? Nobody likes the Spanish. I think some people like the Spanish. Certainly the Spanish like the Spanish. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Czechoslovakians, not since 1994. Are... Yeah, but at the time, they were Czechoslovakian authors, Simon. You know. That's true. Um, That's true. So let's see. Um, and finally, I think I finally managed to scroll down to the bottom where, where we ran out of the questions from them. That's good. I was not sure I was ever going to catch up to that. Um, one thing I wanted to ask actually about the, uh, the dungeon design um, and, and actually about the story side of things when you were writing it. Were there moments when, thank you, Gesson, uh, were there moments where they were asking you to write story bits and you felt like you didn't have or you wish you could have had more information to work with about the story bits, you know, where they would say, we're looking for a particular uh, aspect of this character's development, or we're looking for a particular mm. narrative line, and you're almost sort of like, well, what's my motivation? You know, the old actor saw about yeah. that. It, was there a, were there moments like that where you wanted more information to work with, or did you not run into that too much? Um, I think the problems that I encounter like that are not so much lack of information because uh, as I said like we were kind of this very contained bubble of what could be happening I could if I needed more information I could turn to somebody and find out but I think um, something else that you said that uh, str uh, strummed a hit a chord ah, I'm <laughs> struck, my struck a chord struck a chord yeah yes. struck a chord so say you have um, a proposal for a character but uh, in the course of developing it something essential about that character changes and so um, sometimes I'll come to a point where I feel like I don't understand the character anymore, but it's been decided that the character is going to be a certain way. Um, and I, I just feel like this kind of sense of panic, like, but who is this person I'm supposed to be writing? Like, right, who right. are they? I don't know anything about them anymore. And so, um, it, sometimes it can be like just this half a day of like, who, who is this person? Okay. I need to like write some backstory. I need to write some journals for them, get inside their head. So that can be a little bit scary sometimes when you come to having to write a, a speech or a dialogue for somebody that you feel like you don't know. So... That, that takes a bit of, of working through, I think. Interesting. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I think it's, I've often had the experience of writing um, something where I'm writing on, basically I'm writing for something. It's not exactly commissioned, but I'm told to write a story for a particular anthology with a particular theme. And if the theme is not something I would have come up with myself, um, that can sometimes be challenging. Although, I wonder if, uh, just sort of a follow-up to that question, for you, do you find that constraints benefit your creativity? I mean, my experience has been that sometimes having limitations forces me in a way to think of ways to address things creatively that if I could have just written anything about anything, uh, you know, I would have done that. I mean, you may run into this with poetry, which you talked about enjoying as well. The difference yeah. between free verse and a sonnet. Sonnets sometimes can be more creative because of these things that, that sort of you're drawn from. So anyway, I'm, I'm curious if that was something you've experienced also. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think 
having a bit of pressure that it has to be a certain way uh, in a certain style and it has to be done at a certain time it can be the most creative uh, position to be in as you say um, I think that's why for this game I think we knocked out um, hundreds of thousands of words in the span of a year whereas myself I've never ever ever been that prolific because there was just never the occasion or as you say the universe the restraints to work under so yeah I think I very much agree with you on that mm -hmm. um, yeah we have a number of people who are asking because we <laughs> shockingly my channel does attract some writers <laughs> so I have mm -hmm. some writing specific questions here um, I'm not sure that I'm going to ask the question about whether you adopt behaviors and mannerisms of the characters you write. I guess I'll ask that quickly. Do you find yourself writing a character and then find yourself imitating that character um, at all in the process of writing them? You know, you go, yeah. get up to go to the refrigerator and all of a sudden you're speaking in their terms as a word. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know if it gets away from the writing table, but I know for sure, like with me and Jan, we have it, it, like this little world for all of them, like all of the races before we even got them voiced in our heads spoke a certain way so uh, the goblins all in the game all hiss a lot and so me and Jan will talk to each other in goblin language all the time like <laughs> yes pig skin that sounds great thanks you know uh, so I think in, indeed we get kind of lost in that little world but hopefully it doesn't um, bleed out into going to the grocery store and talking like that to the cashier or something right. like that. What happens in the development studio stays in the development studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Let's see, uh, Tayson asks, when you hit that writer's block, assuming you ever do, how do you deal with it and you have a game to finish and tons of dialogues and lore to write? I actually have an answer to that question about writer's block, but I want to hear Sarah's first. What, how do you deal with writer's block in a game sense? Uh, two ways. Um, one would be free, uh, free writing, freestyle journaling, writing stream of consciousness helps me sometimes. Um, another would be reading something that I really like. A lot of times just reading some... Um, mastery writing mastery which is where john milton comes in for me helps mm -hmm. to kind of stir your creative juices that, that doesn't and, make you go oh my god this guy wrote this whole thing when he was blind it doesn't do that to you ever <laughs> yes yes but also if you can forget all of that <laughs> decontextualize it and just read something really masterful you just uh, for me it kind of lubricates all the all the gears gotcha gotcha yeah what about makes, yourself that makes sense and uh thank you horses for the follow my opinion about this writer's block thing because i've been asked this many times at conferences and and by different aspiring writers um writer's block to me doesn't exist as such writer's block is a stand-in for something else um, mm. writing is something which is very sort of deeply connected to the psyche I won't get into say that it's into the soul but it, it may be partly that but normally if you run into writer's block I found that you're actually blocked by anything else other than the writing uh, you know you're blocked by things that are happening in your life you're blocked by fear is a big one you're blocked by uncertainty um, there are things that make you worry uh, about whatever and those are the things ultimately that that you're interested in um, and and that you need to sort of get beyond before you can really take that next step so my usual feeling was that when people ask about writer's block I usually say something like well when you figure out what's actually being blocked that's when you normally will find that writer's block is not an issue anymore so you know taking a walk watching some TV uh, you know hanging out with friends, playing a game, shooting some hoops, playing some tennis, something, anything to sort of get you out of whatever it is that you're dealing with, I think, is, is one way that I deal with that. Um, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, let's see, and uh, thank you for the follow, Loris Day. I appreciate it very much. Welcome to the Arbonauts. Um, question, was there a character you felt was, oh, this is dangerous. Was there a character you felt was weak and could have been more interesting? Thank you for the follow, Dark Greenleaf. Um, I guess maybe the way to put this is, was there a character you wish you had more time to have developed in more detail, let's say? Whew. Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with how the game is. I feel like the game is a complete and uh, fun adventure, but you would just, I would just want more time with all of them. Uh, that's like a, such a cop out, I guess. But uh, yeah, I don't know. When you're just trying so hard to reach a deadline, you've got to stop at some point, right? Like you've got mm -hmm. to stop the character where it's at in your development. The, the, the personality you've established and written hundreds of lines for, you've got to keep that. So if on line 150, you want to go back and tweak them, you just don't have time. So um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that. Sorry, not, not a very specific answer, but uh, there there could always be revisions. I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I think that's a reasonable answer. Uh, you certainly, you don't have to go looking for it. Yeah, now now that I think of it, I really hate this. Um, I'm I'm glad that the game worked out as as well as it seemed it did for you. Uh, Demiser asks a simple question: What time of day do you do your best writing? Um, let's see. 
uh, first thing in the morning, which I guess is the classic answer, but if there's a kind of an occasion where I really need to get something done for a deadline and I um, decide to wake up early at home and work from home before going into the office, I find that, that uh, those words come really quickly and easily um, without too much struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, how about yourself? Actually, I'm curious. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, it used to be that I would say at night. Um, and, and, you know, after everybody went to bed is when I did my best work. I've actually come to the conclusion that that's not necessarily true. Um, it's whenever I sort of have marked out some time for myself and sit down and just do nothing but try to focus on the writing, um, mm. rather than waiting for the mythical muse to sort of, you know, inspire the muse that doesn't usually exist as such, yeah. uh, or, yeah. or to find any particular time. And that's mostly because issues with, you know, when you have a young daughter and other things come into play and health and all that sort of thing, um, you don't always have the luxury of doing that. So it's there's no one specific answer except to say that when I schedule writing time, I really try to stick with the schedule that I've set um, because I find that really helps kind of get your brain ready to kind of, you know, s spin up, if you will, for writing. Thank you for the follow, Cam Frenchie, um, to sort of spin up for the writing rather than just I'll do some writing and then find myself getting distracted by the next shiny object around my office <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, let's see. Okay, so we got to the bottom of that. Good. All right. So I've, I've come to the end of that question again. Um, all right. Well, let me ask a, a couple last questions then, and then I will, uh, as I say, I don't want to force you to go, but I know it's getting late for you too. So Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, let me ask, I guess, a couple last ones. The first is, um, so you guys have something coming up. Is there some new, <laughs> Arbright's is best when we're holding Virgil's root beer. That's true, EXE. That's, that's <laughs> certainly true. Uh, is there some new project um, that you're at liberty to speak about. I tried to get Yon to answer this question last night, and he, he mm. uh, demurred, but I'm wondering if I can get you to answer um, about a project that you will be working on either within Larian or an individual project that you're working on uh, writing-wise that you're hoping to bring to the public eye soon. Not necessarily Divinity Original Sin, but, you mm. know, something else. Oh, yes. Well, um, as far as Larian, I guess I'll leave any of the big reveals to Sven. I know that he recently gave an interview with um, Eurogamer who is very cryptic about getting some intellectual property that uh, we might want to start a game on and I don't even know what this is so uh, I guess I'll leave that in his hands. For me personally, um, if I ever get that blog up and running I have um, a lot of big ideas about a series of essays comparing Beyonce's work to Walt Whitman as the new voice of <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> American literature. I really do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, I know, but I really have compelling reasons. And so, when I um, when things come down at the office and I get the series out, uh, I'll let you be the judge whether whether I can convince anybody that uh, Beyonce is comparable to Walt, Walt Whitman. Oh, that's so. that's you know now that's yeah. I mean that's now we've heard it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, you can be the judge, indeed. <laughs> yeah, interesting. <laughs> I don't think I had expected that um, that to come out. Um, also, I think I'm. I think I'm getting killed here. I'm pretty sure is what's happening to me. Maybe running oh, into no. the poison cloud is not the best idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This 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 game. It really it, it takes all of your attention and faculties. You know, you might be talking to me about Beyonce, and you go through the poison cloud, and suddenly you're dead. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm absolutely blaming Beyonce for this. I mean, it's it's uh, that's <laughs> when that's in doubt, the world to. blames Beyonce, just like Walt <laughs> Whitman. No, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Well, this is just so I could, uh, you know, show you guys the resurrection mechanic, obviously. Um, so uh, let me just <laughs> let me just heal myself up here. Um, let's see. Okay. And then um, last few questions from chat. Uh, let's see. Question. Do you ever use your family's interaction or friends or strangers with each other as inspiration for writing? I do that for my stories, he says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I think if you're if you're kind of getting the feel for a character and uh, they there's something in the concept that reminds you of somebody that you know. Uh, I, I said it before earlier that reality is stranger than fiction. So you, something you might have had some like unique experience that you never could have thought of if you were just trying to dream up something new, but that can inspire uh, something in, in a character or in, in your writing. That's uh, yeah, special. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I would like to resurrect you, please. There we go. Oh, look, it's so dead in the poison cloud. So if you resurrect it, it's just going to be in the poison cloud again. No, no, no. I will get him out. Get out. Get out. There we go. That was all part of the plan. <laughs> Doing terribly at, you know. This is also that when I actually start playing it tomorrow. Please heal. Beautiful. Uh, let's see. All right. 
I think I accidentally healed herself. Well, <laughs> this is all me getting this out of the way, clearly. <laughs> all right, so that I'll, I won't be a fool tomorrow. Uh, let's see. How do you deal with inspiration when you're out on the town or food shopping? I have no idea what that's supposed to be about. How do you deal with inspiration when you're out on the town? Oh, uh, like if you get inspired, if you're... If ah, you're, writing inspiration. Yes, I shopping. follow. I follow. Yes, so how, how that, that is a good question. Sorry, Xanos. How, uh, how do you deal with that? Do you carry a journal with you or... No, no, I guess just uh, trying to stay focused enough to pay your bills, get through it without making any strange voices or looking off into an abyss majestically or psychotically. Yeah, I don't yes. know. <laughs> no, I think that makes sense. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, question from with intent. Um, hey, Glob Monkey, I'm not going to ask her how to tell me not to suck at this game. You, you relax, Glob. <laughs> you relax over there. Uh, with intent asks, what compelled you to want to write in the first place? And I don't think we asked that question. What what compelled you to be interested in writing, period, let aside the game side? Ooh, um, <clears throat> I guess it's a, a bit of a hackneyed response, but it's been a part, it's just been something I like to do and something that I wanted to do since I was old enough to do it at all. I've always liked, um, especially poetry, I can remember from being a little kid and entering poetry contests with poems about my parents and bluebirds and sitting on the couch and this and that. So. Um, I guess it's just always been something I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So it was something you always expected to do um, in a way. Um, and uh, Lakota asks, uh, no, actually, that's already been asked, Lakota, about characters. And, and the answer was yes, she would, and so would I like to see uh, different kinds of characters in games as well. Lakota, when I was playing Assassin's Creed 3, was uh, Lakota is, um, is part Native American. So we were talking a little bit about um, his experience of watching a game where um, where he's represented in a way. I, I, I often tell the story about Ursula Le Guin, who had a person come up to her, um, an African-American woman, who said, thank you for writing me into a story mm. because up to this point um, here was a person who was a fan of fantasy and finding uh, black characters, characters of color period in science fiction and fantasy is very difficult and Ursula Le Guin of course in A Wizard of Earth Sea had many uh, darker skinned characters, in fact Ged is darker skinned um, mm. and because she was an anthropologist and she had an anthropologist training and she wanted a world that reflected that diversity so I, I think that question has been answered but um, anything, I mean I guess anything, in, any specific um, I think you already mentioned Middle East Eastern was one um, that you would like to see more of, and any other underrepresented one in particular that you'd like to see? Well, everybody, everybody, right? Everybody around the whole world. Uh, I think we really underestimate how valuable it is to see yourself reflected in the media. I don't think people, <clears throat> I don't think most of us understand uh, what a big impact this has on your psyche, to see yourself made important, to see yourself made a hero in some way. Uh, and we like to pretend like, okay, but it's just it's just a story. You could be anybody. You, you mm -hmm. could pretend, you could role play as anybody, but it's not true. There's something really special and unique about seeing your story or somebody that looks like you uh, made magnificent or invested in in some way. I think it has a big impact uh, on people. So I would, I just would love to see as much new and exciting and diverse, diverse occasions of this as possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a good answer. Um, let's see. Um, what else here? Uh, let me see. Oops, sorry. Okay. Uh, and I think there was one more. Um, that answer actually, Glob, has already been answered. So if you look at the video earlier on, you'll be able to see how she got uh, involved. Um, there was one other one was, oh, that, I'm sorry, that is a slightly different. So I'll, I'll sort of finish uh, off this side of chats things and then I'll kind of close things off and I'll let you go. Um, Glob asks, how, how do you get started? And I'll change that a little. How would you recommend people get started with writing specifically in the video game field? Um, should they go to a party and, and run into someone who works for Larian or, or how, do they, how do you recommend uh, that they do it? Yeah, well, uh, I have limited experience, as you guys know, uh, getting into the field because I've only done it the once. But um, I think what's important is no matter what you're doing, being associated with the field that you want to stay in. So, um, yeah, I got very lucky and I met somebody at a party, as we said. Uh, but without the experience I had had first tutoring and then working for the curriculum department of that tutoring company and then getting involved in proofreading and editing because of that and then getting to contribute creative creative short stories to the stuff I was proofreading and editing I wouldn't have gotten the job so I think it's always no matter what you're doing even if it's tangentially related staying in the field of uh, writing, modding, whatever it is um, that you want to do specifically and as long as you're always in that field and you're always uh, pushing your boundaries within that field I think chance favors you, you know, so um, yeah, that would be it, I guess. And, and modding, I think, is, is uh, important for this sort of stuff also. 
Yes, I, and I would agree with, with that as well. The sort of general point being that the more uh, generally good you become at writing, the more your chance will come in video game writing uh, if that's where you want things to go um, because these skills are applicable everywhere. So, um, you know, she didn't start out specifically as video game writer, but they admired the stuff she did in another field, and, you know, and now here you go. Um, now she's able to write goblins, uh, you know, with the best of them, <laughs> both, both in real life and otherwise. Um, and, and Viz, by the way, is a big fan of um, your choice. Twitter, apparently. Uh, oh, goodness. <laughs> yes. So you're going to have a lot more people. I don't know if people. I respect your standards, but thank you very much <laughs> You anyway. don't respect that he respects the Twitter. Um, all right. Well, I want to, uh, so I'm going to, uh, because again, it is very late. Um, Sarah, I am, first of all, sorry about the power outage in the middle of the interview, but I am so grateful for you for coming on. And um, this looks really great. I mean, I, I know I was trying to focus on the really interesting discussion we were having, but I think this is going to, I'm really going to enjoy this from a game point of view and from a writing point of view. Um, anytime I get to see good dialogue and interactions uh, with characters and story is a good thing. So thank you very, very much. And, um, you know, please feel free to stop by the stream again. We'll definitely be doing a, a number of these. And, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is really great fun. Uh, it's nice to meet all your your hordes, nice, friendly hordes. Friendly uh, hordes for the most part. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's very cool. And um, you guys are, are going to keep playing the game, I guess, huh? Yes, uh, I think we are going to keep playing for a little while. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to open this door for one thing. Um, ah, yes, good luck. The, the solution is there indeed. Yeah, so um, uh, enjoy. Uh, thank you very much for having me. This is very good fun. Thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate it. And uh, please pass on my thanks to, uh, and congratulations to Larry. And, and uh, chat, can we, uh, can we get some thanks and some love in chat as well? Um, I see a few, but can we get some... We we can do it better than that, people. Can we can we get some like serious waves of you know thank you, Sarah, and this is amazing, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. We will we will get a we'll get a wave of this in just a minute. There we go. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, thank great you interview. a lot, guys. This is really fun. Yeah, Thanks. this is great. Okay, thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate it. All right. Good night. Have a good night. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, all right. Thank you all very much for staying with that. Very cool. All right. Um, you have amazing curtains. <laughs> All right, well done, guys. Um, good job, everybody. Um, Sarah Hype. People are looking at me weird at work now. Yeah, and thank God the power stayed on the rest of the time. After this, uh, after the uh, cast is finished, I'm gonna have to take a look because I have everything plugged into my battery backup system, so that should not have happened. I don't know what the deal was there. Um, thank you, Sasquatch Fifty One. Thank you all very much. Um, thank you for who have done the followers today. I appreciate it. And uh, Polar, your last question. What was your last question? I don't remember. Um, your last question. I'm zooming up here. Polar, 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 the last question. Ah, oh, shoot. No, I didn't ask that question. When creating a universe, what systems do you find to be the most difficult of a universe to flesh out? Sorry, Polar. No, I didn't. We'll have to try to get it the next time on that. I did not find out. <laughs> um, I, I apologize for that. Um, all right, folks. So um, let's see. How are we doing on time here? We're looking at eight. Okay. That's, that's actually fine time-wise. Okay. Um, so uh, let me, the title cut Sarah's name down to, well, it shouldn't. Mine has this up at Sarah. Um, Yeah, I, I appreciate it, Duke Lemon, but um, respectfully, I'm going to decline. Um, I, I think that the sound actually helps people, um, and it sort of helps the channel. So, again, I apologize if that's disrupting you. Um, I may later on go back and check stuff with the volume, but um, it's, it's a highlight for most people. They really like it. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline respectfully, but I appreciate your opinion, and I will take it into account. Um, but uh, what is this? Okay, I'll take it into account, but anyway. Um, but thank you for letting me know, and I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll see if there's a way I can drop the volume uh, later on, but I'm fairly, um, as I say, most people seem to be, seem to like it, so. Um, let's see. Let's see, what do we have here? Call her back right now and ask, yeah. <laughs> I have one more question for you, no. I mean, it's like, uh, I think it's... 7 a.m. is one. It's, it's got to be like 2.30 or something like that over there. Um, but yeah, that was great. Um, we got a lot of really good answers there. I think some really interesting answers um, from Sarah. And to get a real sense of sort of the writing side. I mean, last night from Yon, we were getting much more of a focus on audio and on the story. Um, yep. That's fine.
Thank you very much, Sugar. Yeah, I know. I'll have to see if I can fix it. Um, but, you know. Yeah, it was really rude, so now he can enjoy his ban instead. Honestly. Alright, I mean, I'll see what I can do about fixing it, but, you know, you just, it's not the, uh, it's not the way things go. Um, anyway, so we will see. Here, I will turn off the follower notification for now since it's bothering them, but... And guys, I can ban people for whatever I want, thanks. Um, the problem is that there's no, uh, there's no volume sort of associated with it is the problem. There's no way to turn down the volume in the follower notification. So, um, it's something that I've got to work on and I'm more worried about the power going out over the next time. But I will turn the power off, um, the notification off. Um, I don't like doing that, but I'm going to do it for right now. So, um, that's the deal. Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, well, all right. So let's, the follower sound has been turned off. So the follower sound was kind of annoying, so let's do it. Oh, very cool. Thank you, zombie. I appreciate that. Yeah, I will try to turn down the uh, volume. I'll try to figure out a way to turn the volume. But um, but basically, yeah, what Sotifi said is the case. Um, so. All right, now let's get back into the game here. I can rotate the, oh, I can rotate the view. That's cool. Is there, there's only a limit, though, as to how far I can turn it? Um, yeah, exactly, Snark. My talking is distracting you from my stream. Um, do you know how... Can I only turn it this far? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll turn the follower notification off for now. I'll try to deal with the volume later on. But let's please go on to another subject, please. Um, so, I've tried to rotate this around. Is this as far as I can go? Like, it's supposed to just get locked into place here? Does anybody know? I'm only like, I mean, a half hour, if that, Polar. I can enable it in options for 360 rotate. Ah, cool. I will do that then. Options. Let's see. Let's take a look. I assume that's going to be under game. I mean, rather, uh, controls. I can hit the B key to go top-down view. Okay, cool. It's locked for the main game. Oh, yeah, I know, Viz. <laughs> I know, I did feel bad about that. Um, it's locked for the main game. Okay, so you can't do it then, Rogan. All right, okay. All right, I just wanted to make sure. Um, let me try that top-down view, though. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Wow, that's that's weird. That reminds me of a game. Is it Crusader No Regret? It's an old-style game. This reminds me of something. The sort of looking directly down on top of it. That's strange. You can unlock free rotation and options. All right. Do you know? Do you guys know which under which options? Is it under game options? Oh, options camera. <laughs> to my sir. Okay. All right, so it sounds like it's limited in certain contexts. All right. Oh, uh, wait a minute. There's a rat. Hey, come here, rat. Pet pal. I can converse with animals? What? Wait a minute. I'm allowed to converse with animals? Oh, that's awesome. Game, I needed to scroll down. Okay. Game. Scroll down. Unlock rotation. Option available for custom campaigns. It was developed for a limited camera rotation. You'll see graphical artifacts. Okay, okay, okay. Well, then I'm not going to do that then. Because I didn't... I, if it's going to screw things up in the game, I don't want to deal with that. And it means that I don't need to have it as well. So... I had no doubt that you would do that, Xano. So I see that you can unlock it, but they don't want you to do it, really, so. Okay. Okay. So is there a... Hmm. Is there a button? Ah, uh, maybe that? Yeah, it's a lever. There we go. Aha! Yes, indeed. There we go. By the way, um, now that the interview is over, I can turn this up a little bit. Um, she made lots of conversations for smaller animals. Oh, I've got to get the pet pal talent. 
Okay. What's up, Ocadrian? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see everybody today. I hope everyone is enjoying themselves. Um, please uh, hit that follow button if you like. You're not going to get the follower notification because people were complaining. So I'm going to try to deal with the follower notification volume later. Um, but let me turn this up a little bit. Is the game sound... Is the game sound too high or too low? I put it down very low during the interview, but is it too low as I do things here? There we go. This seems to be broken. How's that game sound-wise? She does have a Twitch account. Um, it was the um, Paulita is her Twitch account. Bit too low. Is it still low now, or is it better? I didn't know I could put those out. That's awesome. Too low. I need more game sound. Okay. Whoops. How about actually go to audio, I think. Let's go to 40. 40. 40. And 40. Okay, there we go. All right, hopefully that will help things out. Ah, uh, washboard. Glad to see they've included the Skyrim thing of always having completely unnecessary artifacts as well. Yeah, I did notice that thing about alt, and I was wondering about that before. Okay, cool. So let's see. Did So did I hear people talking about an elemental arrow? That an elemental arrow can uh, can change things? Try placing an object over the pit. Stop the surface or cloud from spreading. Oh. You can just throw it from a distance? Really? Okay. That's interesting. A fishing rod. Empty potion flask. Wow, that's very convenient. Very, very convenient. Fire makes poison blow up. Ah, that's good to know. I didn't know that I could place things over things from a distance. I thought I would have to bring it to it directly. Ah, there we go. Oh, God. <laughs> I was feeling very proud of myself, and then... There we go. Huzzah. Excellent. Making zombies and poison things bleed makes them explode. In big groups of enemies, you can put a poison cloud and explode it for massive damage. Nice, nice. Oh, no problem, Snip. That's all right, dude. If you didn't have a washboard, how would you wash your clothes? That's an excellent point, Kathleen. That's an excellent point. And welcome, by the way, Kathleen. All right, let's see. Um, right. Let's quick save it. A lot of this stuff is going to be getting done again tomorrow, by the way. So really what this is is kind of checking this game out. Um, and, uh, you know, seeing how the game plays and so on. Mix and match environment and elemental effects for awesomeness. Cool. You started a wizard all oh, AOE spell plus fire spell big boom. Nice. Very, very nice. Ha <laughs> Pop. Max pain is depressing. The last thing we need is to surprise another angry summoner. Enter sneak mode by pressing C. State of the vision cones of those around you remain hidden. Stealth. Stealth effect. Stealth effect. Does whatever a stealth effect does. Okay. Here we go. Sneak mode. What? Oh my god. Sneak mode. Sometimes it pays off to scout ahead. Try igniting the oil those skeletons are standing on to damage them before you approach. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a rock. 
I am a rock. I am an island. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Needs more cardboard box. <laughs> I know, exactly. I like how you shoot from the rock. So you're just sitting there with a the rock, and all of a sudden, like, the arrow just pokes out of the front of the rock, and they're like, Wait, is that a rock? No, it's a... <laughs> I am the real solid snake. Yes, I am. Oh, that's interesting, Automata. I didn't know that. That's really cool, actually. And can, now, can you throw a candle into the into the fa into the oil, and will it automatically light? That's really cool. I didn't know that. This is going to be awesome. Tomorrow's series is going to be like, uh, how do you do this? I'll be like, well, of course, you noob. What you have to do is drag this to the... Of course you don't do that. Obviously, you don't see it because you haven't put it into B mode. You have to press B for top down, you inauthentic game player. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Apparently, you can. I didn't know that, Rogan. <laughs> That's a new one on me. I guess you can pick up candles. Let me know, guys, if the sound is still okay or if you want it louder, because uh, I can make it louder if need be. I can ignite that poison gas. Yeah, no, it's a good call. I may actually do that. It certainly makes a lot more sense. There's a wild series in chat. Wait, wait, wait. Is he already here? Are the candles in your pack still lit? I open it up. Oh, my God. That's a good point. Series, are you in chat right now? Oh, he is in chat. Series, I'm, I'm calling you out, Series. Are you here, sir? Series, you here? I summon Series. I'm calling him out. He's not lurking anymore. Series, you here? Can you stack uh, candles? You can't. Ah, uh, that sucks. Just hoping you can candle. It's really quiet. I can I can increase it. That's why I asked. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So... Yeah, so it doesn't show, so how do I know? Alright, sounds good, Shadow. <laughs> no problem. Um, is it still lit? However, if you use it in your inventory, it will unlight. But how do... I mean, I did that, but I still don't know if it's lit or unlit. I mean, how do I know that? Nine inch nails? That's an ingredient? I'll bet it is. Drop it out of my inventory. Alright, let's try that. So I'm going to use this. Okay, so it looks like that's off. Now let me try using it. And dropping it. Yep. All right. Yeah, they just they should just put like a mod in or they should just uh, just patch that so that you can actually see whoops. What the deal is. You can only tell if you pull it out of inventory. Okay. You can craft lock picks with a hammer and the nails. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is a game that's going to there's going to be a lot going on with this game. I can see that already. There's going to be a lot involved. By the way, was there anything on those guys that I just killed awesomely? I should resume that best nickname of a day. Yeah, you know what, Net? You're right. I should do that. Netowin's referring to, I used to say, my new favorite name of the week or the day. So I should totally do that. I will do that. Thank you. It's a good call, Netowin. I will totally, uh, I will totally do that. I had actually forgotten all about that. I will do that. That's a good call, you guys. Well, well, a good idea, good concept. 
Man, so you could go crazy looting everything here. Like, I could just loot every single one of these candles. Do you guys who have played this before, is that what you do? You just go around and, like, loot everything in the world? And, like, your inventory just becomes a disastrous mess like it is in Skyrim? Nice. Welcome in, River Dusk. Oh, yeah, Mindless? I plan to put a good deal of time into this game, Common. My plan, by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, my plan is I'm uh, going to be finishing up with Valiant Hearts, which I'll do on my next solo session. Then I'm going to be doing uh, the next Fighting Fantasy game book, which is Caverns of the Snow Witch. And then after that, I'm going to be playing Warlock 2, because it's been a while since I played a nice turn-based strategy with some fantasy elements. So my solo stream is basically going to be Warlock 2, and my co-op stream I'm going to be doing with series will be this game, Divine Divinity, uh, Divinity Original Sin. And then that will be interspersed with the occasional Dungeons & Dragons stream with the Infinity and Beyond crew. So, it's worse than Skyrim. Loot the dirt. What's up, Twisted? Sir Disco of the Hippie Realm, Snutzio? That's awesome. Did he walk along? Well, you can tell by the way I loot my stuff. I'm a latest man. I was, I was hoping we were getting some of that. Did you name your... You should have named your dude Barry Gibb. I've named a guy Barry Gibb in uh, Coder before. What's up, Zyron? Divinity, man. Siren, I finally got a Divinity game. Siren's been after me to play some Divinity game for a long time. Gotta catch them all. Exactly, Nogs. What's up, Demosthenes? I, you know, so far, I'm kind of digging it. I, I think it's pretty cool. I do wish the text was a little bigger. It'd be nice. I could just drop the resolution, but then it wouldn't look so pretty. Pressure plates can be activated by your own body weight or an object of sufficient weight. They make a click sound when they're activated. Oh, so it's a pressure plate, huh? Click. All right. I think we just opened that up. Wait till you get teleport. You could teleport the bosses. No, I know. I know, Zarn. I, I, that's awesome. I could teleport the bosses. I'm all about that. I'll glitch the game. Good to see you, Jedi. Uh, I don't know about Final Fantasy Tactics-ish. Um, I definitely understand where the Baldur's Gate 2 comparisons come in. I can definitely see some of that. Or Neverwinter Nights 1. It de there's definitely a Neverwinter Nights feel to this, I can see. Um, for sure. A lot of broken vases here. What? What happened? Spoiler, what? There is a spoiler? That's not a spoiler? Oh, okay. Cooking pot. Oh, there's this hammer that you guys were talking about. Stunning arrowhead. Oh my gosh. So, I'm not a big crafting guy. Is there is there like lots and lots of crafting that you have to do? Let me see. Where is this stunning arrowhead like? Oh, so you have to have enough crafting to do it. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. This is a really robust one. Old school style, Ultima Baldur's Gate. Well, there you go. Those are ones that I definitely like. Alright, guys. So I can combine anything, right? So I'm going to combine this skull with this cheese to form skull cheese. Okay. Didn't work. I'm going to combine the leather with the cheese to create cheese leather. I'm going to combine the shell with this arrowhead to make a shell head. Okay. So... I guess that doesn't work. I guess there's limits to crafting. I, one of these days, I can see there's going to be a point in this game where I'm going to combine something completely random. I'm going to be like, backpack plus cooking pot equals cooking pack. Skull plus mortar and pestle. Mug of beer and cheese. Alright, actually, let's have this. Drunk failed. What does that mean, drunk failed? It means that I'm drunk. 20% chance to set drunk status. Look at all that healing. Larian's all about options. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've never played one of the Divinity games before, so this is, this is a whole new thing for me. It is a new experience. 
You can split your party by dragging your character's top left portraits away from another, breaking the chain that connects them. Really? That's interesting. Drag stuff along using a shovel die. Exactly. <laughs> I am the MacGyver of these games. Drag stuff along to crafting. Gildor's 2 managed to do the crafting well. Use a cooking pot and hammer. Alright. Alright. Uh. What? I made a battered cooking pot. It's a helmet? What? I just made a helmet? <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, my helmet. That is. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> But I like that it's not a helmet until it's a battered cooking pot. Like, once it's battered, then it becomes a helmet. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my god. A cooking pot helmet. I heard about their sense of humor. They were very big about this. Provides plus four defense to knockback. Do not knock it. Pro helm with plus nine 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 dexterity. If you find a pumpkin, use a knife on it. It's beer battered. Very nice, Thorg. Very nice. Well done. You can recruit your party by dragging your characters top left porch together, reconnecting the chain that binds them. Already done game. Way ahead of you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Rage Quinn. Hi. Let's reason. A living rat. Oh, I need my uh, I need my thing for this. A living rat dares disturb the slumber of the dead. A thie mm. more than that. A thieving fool insults. There we go. Insults the sanctity of the game, the grave, the bloodstone defiler. Where is it? Um. Uh, I met a trio of strange robed men before the entrance to this tomb. They seem to have a precious stone in their possession. Strange indeed. Robed indeed. Your tricks will not save you from retribution, deceiver. The bloodstone. Deliver it now, and I may deign to end you quickly. Uh, blood... Who are you? In life, I toiled to care for these holy grounds. In death, I protect them from profaners and poachers. The legacy of Psy Seal is mine to preserve. Her traitors are mine to destroy. Uh, bloody stone? I don't know what you mean. I suppose you only crept among these sacred tombs for leisure? I, actually, I, I feel like a guy like this would say leisure. Leisure. I suppose you had no lust for the treasure of the dead? Ha! Run if you like, defiler. Whichever way you take leads you to the grave. Oh man, he's got more skellies. All right, Posen's not likely to work here. Let's um. Oh hell yeah! Boom, ricochet. All right, see us for TV. Yeah, I gotta wear a bucket too. Round one, fight. Let me back you up. All right, 
Time to see what happens with this helmet. Spear and magic helmet. Divine light, light decreases willpower and bodybuilding. Okay. Um. Okay. Damage! Huzzah! Miss! Ah! Oh my god, absorbed. Miss time! Can I ricochet that shot again? No. Stunning arrow! Stunned! Kapow! I like me now. Death never dies, fool. Death in a thousand forms rules all, oh my god. This isn't even my final form! Can I get a Charles Lee? Can I get an can I get an exclamation point Charles Lee? Just type in exclamation point Charles Lee. That's that's what's going on with this ghost. Yeah, crushing damage. I figured as much mindless, yeah. <laughs> good times, good times. All right. Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, miss. Can't miss. Well, actually, we got some healing is going to be a problem. Oh my god, damage. <gasps> Alright, first of all... Okay, that's healed. I know, I probably should. Oh, I used it all up? Ah. What's that next to that? I don't have enough action points for any of this. Shoot. Um. Alright, give me in ranged power stance anyway. And. Back me up. Haha. <laughs> Try divine light on this guy. I don't know if that's going to do any good, but we'll find out. Ow! Uh oh. Problems. I really want that ricochet working. Yeah, well, I assumed that would be the case. Uh, I've got to take one of these. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I don't want to do that, but I just can't wait for it. There goes Anos. This ghost is terrible. Do I have ricochet? Yes, I do. Kapow! How you like me now? There goes the ghost. Now that was your final form, wasn't it? Oh, not quite. Alright, we run up to you.
Really? Really with the miss? Five. Too many. Do the uh, action points... Um, do the action points... Uh, okay, sounds good. Thanks, Cambridge. Do the action points, when it says that they're preserved, do they carry over to the next turn? Do people know? Do the action points carry over or not? Good night. Yeah, you missed. Huzzah! They do carry over? Nice, 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 nice. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, sheep up. Very funny. <laughs> you can stack them up. That's cool. T t is it like endless? So if I didn't take a turn for four turns, I would collect however many action points that was? Oh, that's what I was going to ask about with intent. Yeah. Like I couldn't stack them over six turns or something like that? Thin gold cup. Plate armor. There you go. Sharp fighting knife, huh? Here lies Master Rajagrit's first apprentice. Killed by a fallen corpse. Killed by a fallen corpse. There is a limit? Okay. Is there a way to know that limit ahead of time, or no? Okay. <laughs> Killed by dying. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. Alright, I should have uh, saved this already. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything else here. Killed by dying. I like it so far, Zyron. I like it. I was really enjoying the interview, so I was trying to focus on that as much as anything. Um, but now I'm starting to, you know, focus on the game itself. Certain stats help aid you in lessening the AP usage. Oh, cool. Very cool. Whoa. Suddenly water. Uh, I wish... Really wish I could increase the size of this. Not the, not the size of that window like that, but I wish I could increase the size of, uh... Oh. And actually, I guess I gotta move... I should move myself, shouldn't I? Here, let me do that. Sorry, everyone. Give me a second. I think I'm gonna put my camera right here. That'll be great, right, guys? Yeah, sadly you did, Zyron. Sorry to say. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I'm the main character. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I can drag the window, too. Ah, that's cool. I have so much customizability. Too many options. All right. All right, cool. Excellent. All right, so go south and east to avoid them, I think you said. I like this wipe effect, by the way. I noticed this watching someone play it. Oh, I need to uh, get a helmet on his head, too. This thing right here, like, you guys see how this, like, wipes out of the way? as they move. I love that effect. That's really cool. Not sure about the music. The music is not particularly inspired, but... Armor rating 1. Old cloth cap. That bucket is precious. I 
I don't know. I kind of like that cloth cap, though. I admit that that's pretty amazing, but... I know. It's a good point. It is a good point. That's, uh... Yeah. Southwest, not southeast. Oh, alright. Okay. I'll go southwest. I, I don't know. kind of like that cloth cap, and it's the same armor value. Really, Viz? I didn't know that. Alright, southwest it is. Wait, didn't you say I shouldn't talk to the guards? Because those are the guards, right? Oh, they're drunk. Great. Should I not talk to the guards or should I talk to the guards? Girl's a total pothead. Very nice, Pop. Da 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 da. That pot. That pot, though. Avoid them for now. Oh, cool. Look at that. That's awesome. Look at that face. Screenshot. I mean, that's something they could also add in. Are there any plans for them to add more of the music in? Discovered a waypoint. There's a lot of quick travels between any of the waypoints you've visited so far. I see. Uh, I, you know what, Abergam, I could, but the interview actually was over about 15 minutes ago. Sorry, man. But I'm sure she knows. Uh, she seemed to be pretty excited about stuff. Found a shovel. I found a suspicious-looking mound, huh? Alright. Empty bottle. A rat's tail. Poisoned arrowhead and some gold. I love those water effects right there. That's nice. Look at that water. Look at that water. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Look at that. This makes you want to swim in it, right? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I did, Neto, when I turned them off. I, I don't like doing that, frankly, because it means I can't really welcome people the way I want to. But I turned them off because I don't want people to be... I don't... I don't want to keep hearing the complaints about it. So I just turned it off for now, and I'm going to affect the... I'm going to deal with the volume later. So the, the follower thing is off at the moment. So I apologize for those of you who are following, and I don't know. Um, so I can't change... No, I can't do the sounds only. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So I will, um, as I say, when after the stream, I will see if I can fix the volume. Let me take a look for those. Ishi Bear. Um, I think Ishi Bear followed me since I turned it off. So, um, and Krog's IRL and BJ Squid um, and everybody else I think I got. But for those new people, thank you so much for the follows. I appreciate it very much. For papers, please? Really? I did? Uh... I don't... Hmm. I don't entirely know how I'd do that. I mean, I could change the volume in OBS, but that would affect everything, including what you guys were hearing from this. So...
Yeah. No, I understand. Again, I, I think I could probably turn it down a little bit. It's just, um, it's just, uh, Night Devs, um, it's just Night Devs follower notification system. Um, Neto, and if you go on to Night Devs site, you'll see a thing that says follower notification, like it says plug-in or something like that. Um, and as I say, I'll be able to, I just don't want to do it on stream, but I'll see if I can adjust the, uh, volume of it, um, you know, when I take a break or something. See, I love that little wipe effect where you can see underneath. That's really cool. Mighty ocean, how I Is that a clam? What's going on, clam? Ish, Michelle. Look, look, a wanderer comes my way, walking the sands upon which this poor shell must suffer. Who are you, Sir Shell? Call me Ishmael. <laughs> oh God, that was a nice setup. That was a very nice setup. They they were they were winding up for that pitch for a long time. Call me Ishmael, son of the sea. An outcast upon these wretched shores, an exiled shell, doomed to live under a canopy of arid sky, not his native tender water. It seems strange that you can talk. Of course I can talk. Don't be silly and get off my lawn. No, there's more tongue to me than heart. Indeed, the surprise should be mine. But I still remember the days when your kind swung from branches and plucked the vermin out of their neighbor's fur. You don't seem to remember the past very fondly. Time is an indulgent mistress to one who spends happy hours as she passes. But when your existence is one of misery, she becomes a lethargic harpy. Oh, I remember ancient times, for I have lain here since antiquity. When the ruins around us were palaces, and the sun-bleached dead merry children. All this I have seen, alive, alone, alas. Yeah, it's that way, except because with intent, because it's a shell, all he does is he says, I used to sit at the bottom of a hill, both ways, and not move, because I'm a shell. So I can't move, because shell. <laughs> Oh my god. You say that you are doomed? My fate is a cruel one, I assure you. How many snot noses have held me up against their dirty little ears, only to claim they can hear the ocean? Of course they hear her, the brats. We are on the very edge of the great aquatic mother whose embrace I so desperately long for. So it's the sea's embrace you long for? Yes, yes, I got an achievement. Shell shock. <laughs> nice. Yes, yes, I, king of pearls, ache to repose anew on his coral throne. Hurl me toward the water. Swing me as far as your arm strength gives lease and treasure long sunk I will grant thee. I should decide what to do with you. What do you say, kind knight? Will you return the king of pearls to the sea so he may yield you long lost treasure? Kindness is its own reward, and then there's the promise of treasure to boot. Let's throw him into the sea. Agreed, let's send him home. Liberator, kind benefactor, bless me with the might of your sea-bound pitch. The sea, the sea, I have returned, where every wave feels like a moment's May the bounty of the deep be yours, along with my eternal gratitude. What's up, Splatter? What? And he just, so wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, okay. We threw the shell into the water, right? I dig that. Did he just throw back a chest from the water? Did the shell do that? Thank you, with intent. Did the shell do did the shell just throw the, the chest back from the water? Was that the shell? I thought the shell needed me to throw him into the water, and all of a sudden he's like, Alright, thank you. You have this chest. <laughs> Thanks, Jedi. Perhaps you could take this chest with me. <laughs> Shush, this is magic. 
Oh, good times, good times. All right. What do we got? Ooh, a copper amulet. Now, will it say on the um? Will it say here whether the amulet is magical? Like, will I be able to see? It's not magical unless it says it is, right? <laughs> the water gives him strength. Yeah, I'd like the locket is not magical, right? Am I right about that? What's up, Raven? Simple physics displacement of mass. I'm just saying, man. I don't... Ishmael is too powerful. So, but the amulet will say if it's magical, yeah? That's just an amulet you can sell. Alright. Alright, I'll wear it for now. I don't know about this bounty through the deep, then. Alright, now I'm gonna go talk to these guards. There are... Does it tell you when you need to identify? It'll say, like, unidentified or something? Okay, cool. Ah, uh, Ishmael. Call me Ishmael. All right. Praise to the great Ishmael. Ooh. I love some of these environmental uh, pieces here. Fireball scroll. Okay, now... Seven action points. Now, can anybody use... I mean, I guess because he's already... Can anybody use a fireball scroll? Can anybody do that? Oh my gosh, I didn't put that on. Armor rating two. Can anyone put that on? Can anyone uh, use the fireball scroll? There's a mound to dig up. Where? Where is there a mound? Okay, cool. Um, where is this mound you guys are talking about? You guys said there's a mound somewhere? Where is this mound? Sand mound. Uh, keep going right of ship. Ah, I see it, I see it. There's the mound. Aha! Water resistance potion. Alright, cool. I see it. All right, boys. Greetings. You can barter with almost all characters. Hold it right there, orc scum. No one slips past the Legion unchallenged. Calm down, hit <laughs> Julius. It doesn't look like one of them orcs to me. There's not a single horn in sight, you know. Just hold your tongue, will you, Bibius? You can't be too careful. We are sworn to protect Cyseal. Uh, who are you? We're legionnaires, of course. On the lookout for orcs, but they've been attacking from the sea. God to know why they do it, but we stand firm. We of the Legion, liberators of Rivalon. Liberators of liquor, too, aren't we, old chum? Hee 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 hee. Nice pipe down, will you, Bibius? So you're liberators, you say? Aye. A noble word for watchdog, that, for that is what we do. Watch over the local dogs that ever so often aim for one another's throat and separate them to keep the peace. Separate by the sword, that is. Best way to claim a wily dog is to neuter it. Ha! Spay for pay, Legion's motto. Just put a sock in it, will you, Bibius? Seems you've been enjoying a drink or two. You ever kept the watch? Stood on the lookout for hours on end, bored, stiff. B boredom's a demon, buddy, and booze is the demon hunter. There. I do declare it's time for this hunter to take another shot. Huzzah! 
I'll ask you a few more questions. What do you want to know? Um, about Counselor Jake. So it's Jake you're looking for. Ship sailed on that one, I'm afraid. Fellow's dead. Murdered. Um, what can you tell me about Jake's murder? Can't tell you much more, except I heard he was found face down in a puddle of blood being used as a water fountain by his own pet mongrel. They say it was his wife that did it, and I'll bet a bottle of brandy they're right. A devilish flirt, that one. As if that proves anything. Just keep your trap shut, will you, Bibius? Tell me more about those orcs. Bunch of barbaric... Baby. Thank you, sweetheart. Bunch of barbaric bleeps the b <laughs> a lot of them. They'll kill your spouse and eat your children. We've been putting up a fight against them to be sure, but they have the strength of an ox in every single one of their fingers. So wait, if they have a strength of an ox in every single one of their fingers, that means chat. They have ten oxes. Ten oxes. Not just one ox. Ten oxes. Takes an army to dress down a dozen. Well, we did bring a legion. Just bite your lip, will you, Bibius? I believe we're close to Cyseal. Cyseal, yes. Where fishermen come to live and street dogs come to die. Now, which of the two would you be, then? Just cut the cackle, will you, Bibius? Now then, stranger, if it's the city of Cyseal you're looking for, you're headed in the right direction. Even though most folks are trying to escape rather than reach the damn place these days. Not that I can blame them. This place is cursed. First the dead rise from their graves, and then entire tribes of orcs sound the trumpets of war. You take to the rye for less. Alright. Ooh, I can sell stuff? Book about crafting, used to read. Patty cake, patty cake. Okay. What? And I'm only giving them two? <laughs> I've only got six gold. Well, what if I gave you this? Alrighty, but there's more, my friend. For example, this amulet. Aha! As I thought. Hmm, that's not equal. That is definitely not equal. Um, is there anything I can do to balance this out? Or I'm just, hey, what's up, Taco? Or am I just screwed here? Like, there's no real way. Like, can I... That's all they got, right? Yeah, I did, but, like, I'm still going to lose out. Like, is that a terrible amount to lose out on? Remembering that I'm starting this all out tomorrow anyway. So, I mean, like, is that a terrible amount to lose, or... Or what? Like, right now, I'm giving him 184, and he's giving me 154. Ah, thanks, dude. What's up, Catabass? It's good to see you, bro. How you doing, Cata? Yeah, the problem is that I'm kind of in the middle here is the thing. Like, I have... Oh, wait a minute. Now we're getting somewhere. There we go. 
There we go. Now I split it. Now, is there... Is there... Now, do I have to... Like, if I do it this way... It's like if he like do, will they ever sell it to me if it's close? Like if I say if I like you know sell it and this was like, you know the value of what I was giving him was 120 and he was giving me 125. Will he ever do that? Will he ever do that or is it always like automatically just this? Yeah, I know. I try to want to save my gold though if I possibly can, and I don't need this plate armor. So like, do you guys know what I mean? Never. If they gain money, they'll accept the trade. Yeah, I figured mindless, yeah. Alright, let's do it. I accept your offer. Of course you do. Hold on, hold on. Not so quickly. You may not be an orc, but I'm just... Doesn't mean I trust some outlander wandering the beach. Who's to say you're not a spy? Come, I'm taking you to the wizard. He'll squeeze the truth out of you one way or another. The wizard, you say? Sounds good to me. Lead the way. All right, sounds good, gentlemen. Thanks for stopping by, man. I assume there will be Demosthenes. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. I, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you for your help, man. Uh, agree to wizards bound to know more about what's going on around here. I really like that two different people having being able to weigh in. See, Junius? He means no harm. Come along. We're not far from the city. All right, so let me read these books here. Recipe unlocked. Now, if I unlock it for one guy, baking bread in a city setting, easy as mixing flour and water, finding a hot fire, but out in the wild, the determined baker must go one or more steps farther. Mortar and pestle combined with wheat will produce a sufficient flour for baking. Water must be obtained from nearby well. So, if I use this, Special dust to dust. Pixie dust is to enchanting as kindling is to fire. One is the basis of the other. But never fear, you needn't go pixie hunting and pixie crushing unless you've scads of spare time and an iron stomach. No, first we begin with stardust. Fortunately, you needn't carve and crush a chunk from a constellation unless, again, you've the time and stomach. The stardust herb is relatively common and simple to crush to a fine powder. Um, combined with bone dust, you're very powerful pixie dust indeed. But let's not leave the oft-forgotten moon dust out of the equation. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice to say, a simple moonstone gem will suffice as fully a chunk of, as a chunk of moon itself. Combine chunked moonstone, moon dust with stardust to create a fine pixie dust. Okay. Um, now, once I do this, can I send it to, like, is the recipe for, like, party-wide? Or do I have to send it to Senevine and have her read it also? Green sheet button on your map. There's a recipe tab. Oh. oh. That's cool. Party wide, you don't need to read them. Right, you just have to open them and then it means it's unlocked. Unlocked meaning that, well, right. Just, just meaning that I know, I mean, I still have to read and see what the ingredients say, though. I mean, I don't have to read them, but I know what, like, I have to read and see what the ingredients are, right? Apparently, yes. It's top tier. How do I build crafting? I can put points into it, I'm going to assume.
Earth Staff. That's cool. Um, That's not as good. 